all know, this branch started in 1938. Exactly, you're sitting on where it was actually located originally in an old farmhouse. Um, and there's a picture in the membership office, if you ever want to stop by there, there's a picture of the original farmhouse, which is pretty cool. This part of the building is in 55. So we've been around, the Detroit Association is the third oldest YMCA association in the world. Only to London, England, and Boston. So it's pretty neat. So thank God for Henry Ford and the model team. The civil one. Um, who I have with you today is, and he's been a member 38 years, is Bill Riley, and he's actually with the Macomb County Sheriff's Department, Marine Sheriff's Department, correct? Right. He volunteers and does a lot of different things for us. He also just demonstrates a trike bike that's really cool. It's a new fitness type of exercise. He volunteers at Arts, Beats, and Eats for our Zoom meet and a bunch of different things for us. So please welcome him, and he's going to help us all be safer in our community. The work that I do with the Sheriff's Department is a patrol division, but my actual work in criminology is based on work done in 1945 by Dr. Edward T. Hall. He wrote two books that changed the way I perceived the world. One was The Hidden Dimension, which is how space affects behavior. The other is The Silent Language. Julius Fast went on later to make a popular book on that. But basically, I look at people's behavior and their position in space to determine whether or not they're up to no good. So that's the basis of this. Oh, I can tell they've got someone in the front here. What we're going to look at very quickly is, uh, well, you've already, I'm a sociologist. That's what my actual degree is in. I've been in uh, the Navy for electronics warfare, triple Vietnam veteran, Macomb County Sheriff's Department, and a fitness trainer for trike. The purpose of this program is not to teach you judo or any other works like that. It's how to avoid crime, how to avoid those areas and times when crime is a big target. I want you to ask one question. We're all human in this business. Are humans predators or are they prey? They're both. The characteristic of a predator is eyes in the front, prey, eyes to the side, so that they can keep an eye out. Now I'm going to tell you, a smart rabbit does not sit on top of the burrow on a bright sunny day when the hawk's overhead. There are things that you must avoid doing. We've had a couple of examples in the recent past. This guy in Detroit that was carjacked and it broke his legs. That's, you may not like some of the things I'm going to tell you because we value independence in our society and in our lives. But sometimes it's not wise. So to avoid becoming a victim, you've got to understand crime and criminal behavior and learn how to avoid those. You should also learn how to handle a crime situation. I'm going to give you some of my favorite techniques that don't require much. You don't need to carry a pistol or anything like that. Big stick works. What is crime? Well, it's the violation of community standards. Some areas have higher standards than others. What's a crime in Detroit is often homicide. If we had one in Royal Oak, you'd see a lot of commotion because that's not our community standard. We get break-ins and car damage and things like that. I'm not saying that couldn't happen, but it's the violation of the community standards. The lowest level is the civil infraction. Is there anybody in the room that has never gotten a traffic ticket? Okay, you have not been, but you probably did something. <laughs> well, that's a good point. In our society, you don't get punished for doing wrong. You get punished when you're caught at it. I like to have a little humor with my serious parts. So the um, civil infractions, that's where you go see the judge, you pay your fine, and I can tell you later on if you want to meet one-on-one -on -one how to handle those circumstances because that's your most likely thing. The next level is a misdemeanor. A misdemeanor, that means bad behavior. Well, 
In our Marine Division, we used to have a lot of misdemeanors. Those are punishable by jail time. The legislature and the sheriff's department worked together to get a lot of those dropped down to civil infractions. Because we're not in the business of putting people in jail. We don't have enough room there anyway. We want people to behave. That's the secret. Now, of course, the highest level is felony. I don't think we have any felons in here, but you may have some in your neighborhood. Hopefully, they've reformed. And incidentally, we're going to be zooming through the first eight slides. If you do have a question, feel free to holler or raise your hand. Or it's like an auction. You know, I do watch the audience to see if somebody's saying, what? So what is crime two? Well, property crimes. You know, you do have insurance, most of you at least. So property crimes you're not allowed to take lethal force action on a property crime. Somebody steals from you, you can't go kill them. Apparently a gas station employee thought different. He pulled the gun on a discussion about the price of you know what. But property crimes that involve the victim present, he's taken your wallet or your purse. Now that's a different story. If you are threatened and you fear for your life, <laughs> it's an open game. You can do anything you can. I mean, you'll still have to go to court for it, but once you fear for your life, that's a different story. Now, assault, assault does not have to actually hit somebody. You can have a verbal assault. You tell them. So that's a problem because, yes. Uh, I would rather not give you a specific answer, but as I said, when you fear for your life, because there you're getting into a legal realm, remember that you're, if you do something like that, you are going to go to court, and who knows, there are juries that convict innocent people. So I'm not prepared to analyze it, in, at least not on, on the record, but let's just say that Avoiding that problem is the best solution, and there are there are going to be some ways I will tell you. Homicide, of course, is the highest level of crime. This is an area where I have been doing a lot of work and teaching for a long time. It's called the where is crime. People don't just pick a random area to commit a crime in. They have territories. Predators have territories. If you stay out of their territory, you're not likely to become a victim. Now, if you've been in any kind of a police station or any kind of an investigative agency, you've probably seen the pin maps go up that show where things are happening. Ask them, where should I stay away from? I can tell you this, if you want to catch drunk drivers, you hang around outside at 2.30 in the morning. You guys don't hang around at 2.30 in the morning. They took away one of our best tools to catch drunk drivers when they had headlights that stay on all the time. Because somebody driving at night with no headlights is probably drunk. Stay way clear of them. Yeah, I just forgot to turn them on. Right. You couldn't see. <laughs> um, but they do help us identify locations for a lot of crime. My job as a geographic profiler is to find two crimes that I can connect to one person, then we're on the road to finding that person because that establishes their habit patterns. They, um, they have territories. Now when, one of my favorite techniques is to tell people if you're having a lot of car thefts, at 3 to 3.30 in the afternoon, go look for the nearest high school. They just want to ride home. <laughs> but time is significant. Criminals don't set the alarm clock and get up early to go to work. <laughs> so there is a significant pattern of time involved. 
and that's geographic profiling. It's not fully understood or accepted by many departments. I'm not doing it with the Sheriff's Department. I do it separately. I don't want to appear here as a representative of the Macomb County Sheriff's Department because I'm not on duty. This is my own work that I do independent, but I do have a lot of experience with it. The uh, criminal behaviors are what you watch for. Now, why do criminals commit crimes? Well, they want some money, and they really, in most cases, aren't willing to work for it. So, you do have psychopathic criminals out there. They're the hardest to catch because they actually believe they're doing for their own good. They don't think about society. So if they're a psychopath, we have a problem finding them. But a lot of the criminals are creatures of habit. They do one crime and then they keep repeating it. If you ever want to do one crime, it's hard to catch you. But the second crime you do, you're on your road, yes. Uh, the short answer is no, and the reason is I don't have, I'm not part of Royal Oaks Department, so it's not my jurisdiction, and the second thing is that I would have to be able to tie it in. I don't think it's the same person committing those. If you're talking about the locker thefts or th things, or the car problems, those are not the same person doing them. I'm sure it's a group, not connected group, by the way. Targets of opportunity. They did an experiment a short while ago about uh, people returning wallets that they found. It didn't have a high rate of success. Actually, one of the television programs was talking about people having their lottery tickets checked and getting scammed. So that is certainly a target of opportunity because you didn't tell them you were coming in to get your lottery ticket checked. Gang violence, it's a special case. Detroit has a gang squad. I'm sure Royal Oak has one, but it may be one person in Royal Oak. So I've seen the, uh, the gang signs around. There are some innovative ways of handling that. Then there's the business crime. Embezzlement, uh, people taking Bernie Madoff, for instance, taking the money. I think it was Willie Sutton was asked, how can you steal from people that trust you? He said, people don't trust you, you can't steal from them. <laughs> so be aware that the criminals of the business nature depend on your trust. Now this is the key, avoid crime. Recognizing criminal behavior. Very few people just kind of wander around. People are going somewhere, they're doing something. If you see someone in your environment and you cannot tell me within two seconds what they're doing, then you better keep an eye on them because everybody is doing something. And if they're not in an obvious behavioral mode, they're case in the joint or they're looking for a way to affect it. Now, the, um, this is a slide where we're going to be spending most of our time. Avoid being alone in the wrong times and wrong places. My advice for that fellow that got carjacked is that, number one, he probably had a habit of stopping there. This guy that has been charged with the crime either lives next door or has a good view of that place. As I said, the rabbit doesn't go setting out in public. Now, this is what I meant, is that people value their independence. They want to be able to do things when they want and where they want. But it's not wise to do it all the time. My advice to one person who said that their mother would not get a companion, would not take help. Okay, tell them they're helping somebody else. Give them the option of helping someone else stay out of trouble because the criminal is less likely to attack any pair, even a weak pair, than a single person. So have a companion, 
and especially if you're going to be going into areas that are not the safest and at the wrong times. Do not create an attractive nuisance. You start showing your money. Don't do that. If you feel like this, don't go out in public alone. Have somebody with a big stick behind you. I call it an attractive nuisance because it draws the attention of predators and the nuisance it creates is for the police department. Sorry about that, but I know that for you, the crime that occurred to you was way up here, but when you look at the total crime picture, it's more like in the middle here, we got to get the kidnapper and the, the homicide case a little more attention than somebody's wallet being stolen. So I hope you understand it. It sounds cruel, but it's just the reality. I most often prefer working a pedestrian beat because then I know what's going on. I can see everything. I can do everything. I don't like working in the car. I like being out in the public watching. And if we get more of that in our society, we'll probably reduce the crime rate. The, um, this is the slide about what to do. <laughs> and that's not the good one. The good one is the Acme Thunderer. It'll penetrate walls. When I'm on duty, I carry an Acme Thunder. This is one of the cheaper versions. But it still attracts tension. And you know what? Next time you're at the swimming pool, when the lifeguard blows the whistle, only one person will turn around. It's the person that's misbehaving. So <laughs> if you don't have, I recommend a whistle. And I, I recommend anything you can do to attract attention. So criminals do not like having attention paid to them. Have a dummy wallet. You know all those fake credit cards that you get? Put them into a ratty old wallet with about five dollars in ones and have that. If somebody says, give me your wallet, give them that one. It has nothing in it. If they look at it real quickly, they'll see money and they'll see what looks like credit cards. Any criminals listening to this broadcast, don't pay any attention to it. If you make them stop and look to see if it's real, you might have a chance to catch them. Mm. Memorize the features. Eyewitnesses are terrible recorders of what goes on. We know that. But it, you got a cell phone, it's got a camera on it, snake a picture. Do anything you can to remember who it was and what they did. And even, especially if they have any quirks. <laughs> so get as much information. This is the most important one for your safety. I do not recommend people carrying a revolver or a handgun because in many cases it winds up being used on that person. My weapon on duty is strapped in. It cannot be easily removed and I am trained to use it and I'll tell you what after three tours in Vietnam somebody thinks I'm not going to use it if they commit a life felony in front of me, it's business time. Most of you would not be able to shoot someone. I'm not going to ask you to fess up. I'm just saying. I know that. If you go to the range, you've probably got these little bullseyes. You don't have a person's photograph down there. So if I presented you with a situation, you probably wouldn't handle it. So there are weapons that you can have. And one of the good ones is pepper spray, but there's a limitation on what value of pepper spray you can use. Don't try it on me. I use it as a condiment. <laughs> but whatever you do, make sure you practice with it. One of my favorites is a movie that, and I can't tell you the name of it, but Sean Penn was in prison, and they were picking on him. So he got a pillowcase, went to the pop machine, got about three cans of pop, and whammo! You know, that hurts. It'll discourage most people. You don't have to kill somebody to keep from hurting you. 
hit them in a muscle mass where they got the worst Charlie horse they've ever had, they're not going to be able to do much. And if a flashlight is a weapon, shine it in their eyes, if they can't see what they're doing, they're going to stop doing it. So it's those simple things. A purse, <laughs> don't carry your good stuff in the purse that you carry. Maybe put a can of pork and beans in there. <laughs> yes. I, I saw it so long ago, I'm glad somebody knows the name of it, but wasn't that a good way to handle business? Can I have one more yes. What do you think about organizations like Detroit 300? I think it's great. Community involvement is what is going to, when I said that there is a system for handling gang violence, it starts with the community. The community has to say, this is not our way of doing business. Now. I don't have the website or the research in front of me. I was, I was going through it, but I do a lot of research, so I couldn't get that one. But I'm sure you'll find it, and I'll find it later on to give to you. Call the police as soon as possible. Uh, I'm, I'm going to expand that. You may have just had a, a fender bender. Nah, we won't bother with the police report. Guess what? Both parties are supposed to report, and if you don't make a police report, their police report, which may not be absolutely accurate, is going to become the facts of the case. So always make a police report. First of all, we need to know that something's going on, and we can't do it through our telescopic vision unless you're out on Lake St. Clair. This is one of the worst places in the world for smuggling. It used to be even worse with the Boblo boat. They'd go to Boblo from Canada and then take the boat back to Detroit. Piece of cake. Now, I'm going to uh, finish up by talking a little bit about the function of police. Serve and protect. That's our job. You are supposed to avoid danger. It's my job to go into danger and take care of it. So, serve and to protect, that's our motto, it's my motto. That's why I joined the department. I had, well, I had service with the Air Force, the Navy, worked with the Army, the Marines. I was with the Coast Guard Auxiliary for 15 years, and I've been with the Sheriff's Department for probably 18, I think. Prevent crime. When I appear in uniform, I'm a crime preventer. Do you think anybody's going to be really stupid and do something when I'm there carrying my 357 Magnum? I'm one of the last deputies that carry a revolver. I like the display. Plus, I get silver bullets. <laughs> Now, I do have a backup 45. <laughs> Interrupt crime through presence and observation. Again, if crime was starting, they suddenly take a move in the other direction. If someone in authority, it's like having your mother say, shut up and sit down. And what I just did was called the command voice. Would you sit down? Sit down! <laughs> Dogs and cats and criminals understand that tone. Teenagers, I don't know. <laughs> well, yes, if you use their middle initial, too. Investigate crime and, of course, identify, track, and arrest criminals. Now, I'm going to go back to one of the somewhat unknown characteristics of criminals that will help you identify them. The first one is the most important one. People with no visible objective in their motion and what they're doing there. Especially if they're watching people. If they're watching the window, they may be just wishing they had won the lottery or got more money. But if they're watching people, what's the purpose of that? Unless they're real. I mean, if it was one of those movie stars, yeah. But Watching ordinary people is not a normal practice. It could be if they're doing something that's fun, but 
this is a key element. If somebody's watching other people, photographing them, especially if they're children, bad sign. But there is one that is really relatively unknown, and it's part of my work in research, because someone told me one time, you're a cop, aren't you? And I said, yeah, how do you know? He says, you can smell it. How many of you have ever heard that phrase? You smell a rat and you smell a cop. Well, guess what? And again, what I'm telling you has not been proven, but I believe it. And I'm going to try and give you enough information to help you understand how it works. Criminals are always afraid of being caught. They may not be afraid of what they're doing, but they're afraid of being caught. And fear triggers adrenaline. Adrenaline, in those above the age of puberty, triggers the apocrine sweat glands. Epocrine sweat is different from exercise sweat, which most of you probably could be detected with at this point. As soon as it hits the surface of the body, it starts interacting with the bacteria and it creates a bad smell. To me, that's how I do it. I just didn't always know how it was working. I believe that this is how dogs identify people. They've got a great sense of smell. Now, someone said, well, it's just that they didn't take a bathroom. No. It has nothing to do with how recently you bathed. It's the instant apocrine sweat and body bacteria. And you've always got bacteria on you. Sorry about that. If you use that hand wash, it doesn't do much good. Now, the proof that I finally come up with, I went back to somebody who said, how come they don't have showers in grade school? Those kids get awfully sweaty, but they don't smell bad because the apocrine sweat glands don't take effect until puberty. So if they're young criminals, sorry, you can't find them. <laughs> but if they're adults, they're afraid of being caught. I, can almost, I, I don't have proof of that, but logic and my experience tells me that I'll give you a quick story if I've got a, yep, I do have. I was on the radio duty, and a guy on a boat was trying to get away from one of our boats at the south area. They give me a description of the boat and a description of the person. But he was running one of the faster boats, and at that time we didn't have the fountain, so we couldn't catch up to him. So I'm watching. I can see the Clinton River. And the first suspicion was a boat which did not match the description. The operator did not match the description, but he come from the south. That's good enough for me to start with. But instead of coming in the Clinton River, he goes across the Clinton River. A lot of people do that. But he goes on the opposite side of the breakwater. Why is he doing that? That's, that's very shallow there. Not a good choice if you've got a boat. He come in what's called the sunshine cut. Why did he do that? He could have come up the river. All of these suspicious behaviors. He did the one thing then that nailed him. Turned around to see if he was being followed. I knew at that point that was him. No match in descriptions, but it was. We sent a boat up and we got him. So that's what I mean by behavior. If somebody's looking around to see who's watching them, they bear watching. Now, I had until 1 o'clock, but I talk fast, and you guys listened well. So let me go back and see if we have any questions that didn't get discussed. No questions? I've always been told that you're by yourself. As a weapon. It's a good tool, but try to make sure that the keys are on the outside of your knuckles. That's a good one. Remember, anything. Yes? Where can you find a whistle? The best whistles, the Acme Thunderer. Remember, I don't get any.
profit from it. I, I bought mine many years ago, but the best place to buy a good whistle is at the music stores because all of the others are, the, are these, the not quite good enough ones. But the reason that they're at the music stores is that that's one of the instruments. This one came from a police supply place, and it's still not the Acme Thunder. It costs you a few bucks more, but trust me, when you hear the difference, good question. Who else had a question? Somebody? Yes. Did you fail to find out what the legal level of the pepper You know what? I do. Somebody, uh, just be careful of, of her because she's... The question is... What is the legal limit for pepper spray? Now, I hope you got a pen and pencil, or I'll give it to you later. And I wrote it down here because I knew somebody. Ah, are you ready? Maximum of 35 grams of orthochlorobenzyl ion nitrate. Blah. Something plus an inert gas, or, now this is the easy one, not more than 10% oleoresinin capsicum, which is the pepper. Now, of course, I carry a little bit hotter than that, but again, even the hot one I use as a condiment. I kept my expired one. <laughs> and, of course, we sometimes use a fluorescent dye like the banks do with the dye packs. Do you still use base No, no. Mace is illegal. We can't even carry it because it causes damage to the eyes. Uh, you can, I, I don't know, but I would suspect sporting goods stores. Oh, boy, they must be having a rough crowd. <laughs> I, I would be hard pressed to recommend that simply because you may be causing physical harm. The idea of deterrent is great, but I, I do not know what's in those and I would be very cautious about it. I couldn't use it. I cannot use any weapon that I have not had used on me but I did ask the sergeant one question. Does that mean my gun? No. <laughs> the gun's the only weapon I carry that has not been used on me. Is taser legal? It's going through a process right now. There is a possibility that in Michigan it will be legal. But I go back to the other statement. If you inflict harm on someone that's beyond what is required to stop the situation, you could be charged with a crime. And the question about tasers has more to do, it's, I've probably had as much electrical shock from my work as an electrician, but it can be harmful under some people's opinion, it can be harmful, so I would be very careful about it. Um, good question though. way back, not just to the Sheriff's Department. I've had to work with criminals before, and I have no doubt that I, I don't expect to ever use my gun. I won't tell you what I will use, but I have no fear of anybody, not even my kids' pit bulls. I was, oh, let me, I was the animal control officer in Austin, Texas. Pit bulls behave. Any dog behaves. I stopped one in Ferndale from attacking some kids there with just my hand.
got one of these, and I was told recently that they're only good for one use. Is, do you oh, that's right? I hope that you don't plan on serial robberies. <laughs> no, no one use is good. One use, is it? One yeah. Use? I mean, you buy a new one once, once it's used up. I, is that the personal pepper spray? Do you mind if I look at it for a second? <laughs> Oh, okay. I, I was going to, I won't pull it out. I was going to look at the uh, amount of capsaicin. But the, no, no, don't, don't worry. <laughs> I'm sure it's legal. If they're putting it in a nice purple, blue purple uh, container, that's for your belt, right? But what did I say? Do not carry a weapon that you have not trained on the use of. So my suggestion is you get another one and then you try it because figuring out what you got to do to push it. I taught firefighting, and the first thing I do is make sure you know how to operate the extinguisher. So get yourself, make sure you're upwind. <laughs> and then you don't want to use it on another person, although it's probably mild enough to just sting really bad. But watering eyes is bad for people that are criminal behavior intent. Um, but use it. Make sure you know how to operate it. Are they very expensive? $12. <laughs> well, it's still cheap compared to what happens if you turn it. If you turn it the wrong way, uh, guess who's getting it? So I would still follow my statement. If you're going to carry something, even if it's a stick, make sure you know how to use it. You get some of these punching bags you can use a stick on to find a... The proper, yeah. I, I was trying to organize a um, block, block, uh, a watch, neighborhood watch, neighborhood watch. Because lately, since the houses, you know, have been being empty, we've been getting a lot of robberies. And but what I'm finding with the people in the neighborhood, nobody wants to get involved. I mean, there was a lady that was home, saw the robberies, like, I didn't want to get involved. Like, what well, it could happen to you. What are you talking about? Well, this is a problem. They, they either fear retribution or they... Um, there's a lot of reasons why the question is starting a block club or a neighborhood watch I would suggest that if you want to do that you start with something simpler like just having a party well I had to go to the police department first they had to give me the paperwork and I had to see the I mean yeah. before you even start that oh. just have a neighbor the block that I live on is famous I won't tell you where it's at but we have parties once a month to just everybody gets together. Not everybody. There are some people that don't. But a lot of the neighbors get together. Now, once you know your neighbors, number one, you know who isn't a neighbor, so you can watch them better. But that's how you should start, because then you're not starting out by having people to join a vi what they may consider a vigilante well, group. Well, we're getting a lot of rentals, and they don't want to get involved, especially the rentals, because... <sighs> that's a problem. problem. That's the problem. But I still would try getting the social event first and then asking, you know, if you, and maybe have a page, uh, an email, or a phone that's alert. That's what the captain Rick and I are working to try to do. Yeah. All right. Sorry, I have to get up my son. Oh, yes. Yes. Have you ever carried any other weapon besides the 357 gun? I have a Beretta 45, semi automatic. But I prefer a revolver because it's just more reliable, in my opinion. I, I know there are people who don't have that opinion, but I prefer it. Any other questions? Well, I want to thank you for your attendance and your great questions and your attention. Carry on. <laughs>